I ask everybody to kindly make their way towards their seats. If you want to hang out in the hallways, that's fine too, but keep it down so we can start the meeting. Uh, Supervisor Thurston is unable to be here uh, due to his wife's uh, 70th birthday celebration in Kenny Bunkport. So I will be uh, running the proceedings this evening and we will begin as the town clerk uh, proceeds. Councilman Beal. Here. Councilman Bettina. Here. Councilman Phillips. Here. Councilman Casella. Here. Supervisor Thurston. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. <laughs> This is the regular town board meeting of Monday, November 13th, 2023. I'll entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. I'll move it. Second. Motion made by Councilman Casella, seconded by Councilman Phillips. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's adopted. This time I'll move to a public hearing. The public hearing is for the purposes of the tri-municipal digestion system. So moved. Not the sludge system. <laughs> so we have a motion to open up the I'll public hearing it. by Councilman Phillips, second by Councilman Casella, to open up the public hearing. This is a public hearing for the purposes of the tri-municipal digestion system. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, any residents uh, or anyone that has a comment on the tri-municipal sludge digestion system, feel free to step forth. <laughs> Guess none. Hearing none, none. I make a motion to close the public entertain hearing. entertain a motion. Uh, motion by Councilman Casella, second by Councilman Phillips to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, that's approved. Now the public portion of the meeting. Public portion of the meeting. I will entertain a motion to open a public portion of the meeting for uh, comments uh, with respect to agenda items. Move. Second. Motion made by Councilman Phillips, second by Councilwoman Bettina. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The public portion is now open. If you have any comments on agenda items, feel free to step forth. Seeing none, make a motion to close. I'll second it. We have a motion to close the public portion by Councilman Phillips, second by Councilman Casella. All in favor? Aye. All right, that is complete. Now we'll move on to one of our favorite organizations, the Wapter Historical Society, who has a presentation. Take it away. Good evening, council people. Um, I'm here uh, representing the Historical Society. My name is James Williams. I'm a board member, but also a former professor of anthropology and archaeology. And recently, we just put out uh, out front a display case uh, displaying some Native American artifacts. Some of these artifacts date back 6,000 years ago, um, right up until contact period uh, with Europeans. Um, there are examples of stone tool uh, points, and that's how we date these objects to those dates. Um, there's examples of a lot of the uh, tools that be used in their subsistence economy, so um, things that will grind up corn and uh, fishing weights that uh, were used on nets to, to catch large fish around this area. Um, moreover, our purpose, and my purpose for displaying these artifacts is not only for uh, in recognition of November being Native American Heritage Month, um, but also I, you know, wish and hope to give the residents some context about what life was like here in this area uh, before contact with Europeans. You have a thriving Native American community with multilingual residents and villages dotted throughout the landscape, and those those villages would have been connected with roads for trade and commerce. Um, and, and that's what the Europeans found when they came here, um, was this thriving community of Native Americans. Um, so I encourage all the board members uh, and all the council people to take a look out there. And I encourage residents mm -hmm. and uh, appreciate your time this evening. Thank Certainly. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you to you and President Devine. Do you have anything you'd like to add? or? Feel free. <laughs> 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 Certainly the uh, Wabjurs Historical Society is a great partner of the town. We just uh, celebrated uh, the recognition of Spook Hill Park um, as a legend and lore location. Uh, the first, I believe, in Dutchess County under the legend and lore definition. Um, that wouldn't have been possible without the Wabjurs Historical Society uh, partnering with the town. And we look forward to uh, uh, doing additional projects in the future. And, we greatly appreciate you sharing uh, your valuable history uh, with us on a regular basis, so thank you so much. 
All right, if there's nothing further for the Wapner Historical Society, we will move on to the next item, which is the Hometown Heroes presentation. Uh, Randy Ross will be uh, facilitating this. Thank you, Councilman. Good evening. On behalf of the town supervisor and the town board, it is my pleasure to introduce the two newest recipients of our Hometown Heroes Awards. Uh, although they appear to be different in their focus and in their organization, uh, they pretty much exemplify the term Wappinger Strong. They are good ambassadors for our team, wherever our town, wherever they go, either as a team or as an organization. And they show the best that we can be as a town. First, I'd like to introduce Fairground, uh, who are well represented here this evening. Fairground was, had their origins in 2015, uh, started as with a social worker and with a chef. And they are a woman-run anti-hunger organization dedicated to nourishing the community by operating free marketplaces, community fridges, and tiny food pantries. Fairground has three major areas of work, the free marketplaces, healthy snacks for children, and these tiny pantries and fridges. Currently, there are 13 tiny food pantries and three community fridges. Uh, three of these tiny food pantries are actually in our town. One is right outside Town Hall, and one is down by River Arts, and I don't know where the third one is. I'll find out. Um, they also provide summer lunches and school supplies for children in need. They deliver groceries and, f and free marketplaces for folks in need. Uh, Jamie Lovato is the executive director. She's here tonight. Karen George is board treasurer. She's also here this evening. Uh, this is a wonderful organization, and they definitely exemplify um, everything that this town stands for. So I give you Fairground. Welcome, Fairground. Welcome. Would you like to say anything? Come on up. Um, thank you so much for this honor. We are so pleased to be part of the Wappingers community and to uh, support our neighbors here and also be supported by this community. Um, we have been doing this work and um, really trying to get nourishing food to the people in Wappingers as well as the other surrounding towns. And um, I want to just make a special acknowledgement to our volunteers who are here. Can you all just give a nice big wave if you're a fairground volunteer? <laughs> And the fairground volunteers who are here are also Wappingers residents. So um, we, we do have a Wappingers contingent as well as um, volunteers from other places as well. Um, one thing that I would like to um, just put out there into this Wappingers world is that we are seeking a large parking lot to do large distributions of food that is in walking distance to the village of Wappingers because we have some residents there who are not able to drive to other places where we uh, share food. So if anybody here or anybody, I don't know if this is on public access, but if anybody has ideas, uh, please reach out on social media or our website, fairground.org, um, if you have any ideas about a, a very large parking lot where we can set up very early in the morning on a, on a Friday, on the fourth Friday of the month, to, uh, to share food. Um, anyway, I just wanted to put that out there and thank you all for your support and encouragement. We're so, again, grateful to be part of this community. Thank you very and much. And just uh, for those that are watching, because this will be, it's live right now, but it will play over a number of times. What's the best way to reach your organization again? It can be, uh, our website is fairground.org. Um, my email address is jamie, J-A-M-I-E, at F-A-R-E-G-R-O-U-N-D.org. We're also on social media, so you can do uh, a direct message that way as well. Okay, great. Uh, we appreciate uh, all the hard work that you do. And, you know, uh, communities can't survive unless we have our non-governmental partners. And you certainly meet that definition. Your volunteers uh, do incredible work. Uh, we're getting pretty close to Thanksgiving. And, you know, at the front of many of our minds is those that may not have uh, the ability to uh, 
uh, to enjoy a Thanksgiving like others, and the work that you do is greatly appreciated. We thank you. I'd like to ask your entire group to come on up here and join the town board for a photo op. Is that okay? Yes. Yep, sure. And Randy, if you can come up here as well, we'll have you stand right up front here. their stuff's up there, so. Pardon one moment while we arrange the next group. Okay. Whenever you're ready, Randy, you can uh, All right. All right. On there, take it away at your convenience. Did the pictures come out? Did it work, the camera? There you go. That's what I said. Was that a 50 or not? I wasn't feeling too confident, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> Je Jessica made us nervous. <laughs> All right, here they come. Yeah. Might as well bring them right up then, and we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. take our position once you're done reading. Yeah, come on up. Yeah. Come on up, everybody. You can stand right in the front here, right in front of us. Okay, let's talk baseball. Yay. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what you see before you is the Ketchum AA baseball team, um, state champs. Uh, it was a spectacular year. as a 28-2 and two season for their team. They won New York State Triple AA, sorry, state championship. This was only the second time... Um, Second baseball state championship in the school's history. Let me say that again. It was only the second baseball state championship in the school's history. The team won its league, then section one champs, then regional championship, and then on to the states. Uh, many of the players and coaches are here tonight. Um, the one word that I heard from everyone that I spoke to about this team is family. You guys consider yourself family with your coaches. Um, it's just a wonderful thing. Um, I don't know which coaches are here tonight, but uh, Patrick Mealy, Joe Emanuel, all the Pano brothers and Pano family um, is in involved. So I give you the Ketchum baseball team. All right. So we're going to give you each a certificate and recognition if you can just remain up here after you receive your certificate. Okay, so actually the certificates that we're giving them tonight alongside the ribbons on the table are something we owe you guys from when you were supposed to be the Grand Marshals of the Community Day Parade that got rained out. So we had some special things made up for you all, and that's what we're going to be presenting you with tonight.
Why don't we have the coaches, uh, Sully, get, can you have the coaches come up all up to the top here? We'll get a picture of everybody. Yeah, come on up. Any, anyone else that's part of the, the coaches are part of the team. Come on up here. So I just want to uh, mention on behalf of the coach, there's a number of players that couldn't be here due to tryouts for other sports. Uh, we respect that. Unfortunately, uh, we're going to have to just give them their certificates. Uh, and, uh, you know, appreciate them. Okay, so we'll get in position here. And once they get the last certificate on. Jess, can you take a picture too? Can we get one for the website? Thank you. All right, we're going to continue onward here. But we're going to have to shut those doors. The ones on this side, if you could, or, yeah, that would be helpful. There's other team members showing up now. They're going to do another photo outside in the hallway. All right. Okay, so that's going to do it for the discussion items on the agenda. Randy, thank you for uh, putting that together. Yes, thank you, Randy. Yeah. And we will move on to uh, resolutions at this time. All right, so resolution number 151 is scheduling a regular meeting for the annual reorganizational meeting of the town board. Uh, after discussion, uh, it was determined, uh, obviously, that uh, January 1st, New Year's Day, is a legal holiday. It's on a Monday. So we'll do the normal meeting date, which is the second Monday 
in January, which would put it on January 8th, 2024 at 7 p.m. If there's no objection to that, we'll entertain a motion. I'll move it. Second. Motion made and seconded for the reorg meeting to be on Monday, January 8th, 2024 at 7 p.m. at Town Hall. Uh, motion was made by uh, Councilman uh, Casella, seconded by Councilman Phillips. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye that's approved. Okay, uh, we have resolution number 152, which is a separation agreement. Uh, Jim, would you like to comment on that? So this is a separation agreement that we uh, discussed um, um, in executive session uh, several weeks ago regarding an employee, um, and the agreement incorporates the terms that we had discussed, which is just a um, you know, continuation of um, uh, employee uh, health benefits until uh, they file, find a new uh, employment or um, uh, six, six months. Up to six months, shorter. right. Okay, if there's no. Uh, so we agreed to this, so I'll make a motion we approve it. Second. Okay, motion made by Councilman Cassell, seconded by Councilwoman Bettina. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's approved. Okay. All right. Okay, at this time, I will entertain a motion to, for the purposes of discussion and amendment, untable resolution. 2023-149, which is the final budget, uh, annual budget for 2024. I'll make that motion. Motion made by Councilman Phillips. I'll second. Second. Second by Councilman Casella to untable the previously tabled 149. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so now we're uh, discussing the final budget for 2024. So I just want to make a couple comments first and then we can get into the actual individual items. So the approach that we took to the budget was we wanted to be consistent across the board for everything, which includes salary. So the agreement was that everybody would get the same, same percentage increase. Uh, step raises and the supervisor's budget were used. A lot of them are gonna be changed tonight. That's an issue we need to address later on. We know about that. Um, I met with all the department heads myself, went into in-depth uh, budget discussions with them. And uh, it was a great discussion, so we understand their, their budget very well. And what you're going to hear tonight is that we are making some changes, uh, changes for those. Uh, there are a number of changes tonight you're going to hear about for all three funds, A, B, and DB. Um, we also reduced the amount of fund balance that was required from the tenant of budget. So you're going to hear about that too. And the objective of this budget is to remain under the 2% tax cap. Now, the way we're going to proceed tonight as each council person will go through a special fund with recommended changes to the A, B, and DB funds. And then Councilman Beal will wrap up the rates and what it means to the residents so you understand what's going on uh, with the rates. So with that, um, what I'd like to do is make a motion to approve the following changes to the A fund line items. I'll go through them line by line and then ask for a second here after I've gone through each and every one of the different line items. So first we'll start off with line item, uh, is Frederick here? There he is. So Frederick, as we go along, just please make sure you have all the changes. So the first one is 1010.100. It's 51285. And all I'm going to do is just give what the actual recommended are. So I'm not going to go through what it was before, but actually what we're, we're actually going just, to put in the budget. Just provide the description of what the line yes. is. Yes, so that was the town board salaries. 1010.101A, uh, 10, legislative aid, 25000 11, 10, 100, A, Justice 1, 33, 9, 50. 11, 10, 101, A, Justice number 2, 33, 9, 50. 11, 10, 103, A, Deputy Clerk, 49, 1, 1, 6. Uh, 11, 10, 104, A, is the Clerk to the Justice, 21, 9, 48. 1110105A, Clerk to Justice 1, 4799. Frederick, am I going too quick? Are you getting all that? Okay. 1110106, Arm Court Officer, 47863. 1220100A, Supervisor, 65816. 1220101A, Supervisor Secretary, 52250. 1220103A, Deputy Supervisor, 
1,835. 1220104A, budget officer, 5,395. 1220105A, equal opportunity officer, 1,000. 1315103A, escrow account clerk, 10,000. 1315199A, it's comp time, 10,000. 1330102A, deputy tax receiver, 41,670. 1355.100A, assessor, 53,211. 1355.101, deputy assessor, 51,508. 1355, 1355.103, data collection, 56,788. 1355-198A, contingency 2,000. Again, a lot of these contingencies, even though they're called contingencies, is really for longevity. So they put it under contingency, but people, as they have a number of years of services, they get paid out. So it's, a, it's really, it's, it's what, that's what it's for. So when it says contingency, it's really for longevity. Uh, 1410.100A, town clerk, 71,963. 1410-101A, Deputy Clerk, 39,588. 1410-103A, uh, Deputy Clerk, number two, 39,588. 1410-198, Contingency, again, Longevity, 4,000. Something that we didn't have in last year, so we missed it in the budget last year, so now we want to make sure we put it into the budget this year. 1410.200A, Town Clerk Equipment, 500. 162484A, Town Hall Custodian, zero. 168402A, Website and IT Services, 16,500. Line 3510.100A, Dog Warden, 30,289. Highway Superintendent, 5010.100.A, 99,298. So a lot of these salaries you're hearing here tonight are at that 3.25%. That's what we agreed to, that's our starting point. So a lot of these have already been reflected, especially for elected officials. Three weeks ago, we had to go ahead and report that. So this is consistent with that. 5010-101.A, Highway Secretary, 47,326. 5132.401A, Garage Repairs, 5,000. 7620.100A, Senior Center Director, 26,000. And this is in two places, so it's also in the V fund as well. 7620.100, um, 101, Senior Assistant Director, 47055. 7620.200A, Senior Center Furniture, 5,000. So that's the list of that. And then we have a couple other items here from, uh, that's all expenditures. So we have a couple of revenue ones, Frederick. So uh, line item 2401. Dot zero 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 a interest in and earnings, eighty five thousand. Twenty six zero one dot zero 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 a fines and fees, two hundred and fifty thousand. And three thousand five dot zero 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 a state aid mortgage tax, four hundred and sixty eight thousand. So that concludes all of the adjustments to the A fund. Are you you all set, Frederick? Yes. Okay. So again, with respect to the elected officials, we already. Uh, as Al mentioned, we already uh, discussed that previously. It just had to be reflected within the budget document, uh, which is what what he did uh, here. Now we have B fund. Wait, were we going to do the funds separately? Uh, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, uh, Al, was there a revenue change also on the A fund side or no? Yeah, that's what we just did. Okay, so that's done. All yeah. right, so... Uh, why don't we uh, entertain a, a second uh, on Al's motion to make these amendments. We have a second by Councilman Phillips, unless there's any questions or further discussion from the town board. Okay, uh, Frederick, you're clear on, on this? Yes. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that A fund is complete. I will do the B fund. I will dispense with my comments. Ready, Frederick? I am ready. Very good. 
So 1440, 400B, engineer, 75,000. 3120, 400B, vandalism, 250,000. 3120, 402B, law enforcement contingent slash, what were we calling the SRO? School, uh, school, school resource school, officer. School yeah. resource, um, 50,000. And 3120403B, community security, 20,000. 3410100B, fire inspector, 26176. 3410101B, you zeroed that out? That's uh, 15,000. 15,000. 3410198B, contingency payroll, 5,000. 3410406B, fire code on the CD, $200. 3620100B, code enforcement officer, zero, it's an empty line. 3620101B, Code Enforcement Officer 55553, 3620102B, Data Clerk 36054. Hang on, that's, that's not correct. So we had two minor updates uh, from the uh, Building and Zoning Department. So Chris is going to make those couple of uh, updates. Sorry about that, Frederick. So 3620102B42333. Hang on one second. So Frederick, you have that number, correct? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. And the next one is 3620104B. 43365. Yes. Thank you. 3620105B, Code Enforcement Inspector, 68160. 3620110B, the stipends, 20,000. 3620198B, contingency, 5460. 3620-406-B, copier. We have to copier lease. Six. 26. 26. 2,600. Okay. 3620-408-B, training, 1,000. So just a quick comment on some of the lines, the stipends as an example. Our uh, folks in the zoning and planning are required to get certain certifications. That's really what that's for. And the contingency payroll that uh, Councilman Phillips mentioned, again, that is more of longevity. So it, we call it contingency, but it's really longevity. They're entitled through the union to get that pay. So that's what that is. Sorry, go ahead. No, I like these breaks. Thank you. 6410400B, <laughs> <laughs> printing and advertising, 5,000. Seven. 7,000. Seven. Sorry. Yeah, it's got too much to spend. 7020101B, um, Recreation Assistant, 39462. 7020195B, comp time, 5,000. 702402B, copier, 4,000. 7110100B, Supervisor Building and Grounds, 75154. Uh, hang on one second. Uh, that one's 76075. Uh, uh, Give me a minute. So the number is 76075 for that line. Do you want to take much? Do you want these? Or these? Yeah, these are okay. okay, these are good. Okay. 7110 110B, groundskeeper, 43089. 7110 111B, maintenance worker, 50 
8.55, 71.10, 112B, maintenance worker, 58.55, 71.10, 113B, senior groundskeeper, 43.089, 7110116 B automotive mechanic zero 711117 assist assistant supervisor 69347 711118 B maintenance mechanic 53690 711119 B maintenance mechanic 53690 7110130B it's the Greenway Trail Warden we zeroed that out to be figured out later 7110200B parts equipment 35000 7110401B Robinson Lane 7500 7110402B, 4000. 7110406B, Carnworth, 8000. 7110439B, Chelsea Dock, 10,000. 7110457B, Tree Service, 15,000. So one, one point here. So for the Greenway Trail Warden, we created another line. So Frederick, I think right now you have the $10,000 for the Greenway and 7110-130B, correct? Yes. So we are gonna to try to create a 400. Bill, I think that's what you wanted to do. Right. Yeah, so we talk about park wardens versus trail wardens. So on a 400 line, uh, and if it's not appropriate accounting wise, we'll fix it, but we put 10,000 in for a park warden uh, for the possibility of doing uh, and I, I know you don't like this word, but stipends for folks that live adjacent to parks <laughs> in the town, right? So if you live next to a, a park uh, and you want to be a park warden to handle opening the gate, closing the gate, keeping eyes on the park, I think that there's an opportunity post January 1st to uh, have that conversation and be able to uh, provide uh, a stipend to those that uh, want to be a park warden. So taking the money we previously had uh, appropriated for trail wardens on Greenway trails, we actually divided it in four by four, uh, so it's a quarter of that funding. I think we could be more effectively spent on uh, park wardens. So we're putting it in the budget. Again, this is an appropriation. It still has to be uh, uh, discussed uh, within the new administration. So that the, the question is right now, Frederick's got it sitting in the 130B, 130B uh, line. So Frederick, I don't know if we can create a 407 line. Can we do that and put it in there? So So we have a we have a line in there for 2,500. So we can add 10 to that. And make yeah, it. I, I want to make sure though that we codify the line with Park Warden so that it doesn't get lost in the Greenway vortex. You know what I'm saying? If we could change the title on the line, that's fine. Sure. Yeah. I I, I think historically in the past the reason why it was broken out separately was there was some Greenway. It was Grant Yeah. But I don't, as far as I know, there is no longer any Greenway. No. At, the, at this no. moment, there's no Greenway grant funding. However, Greenway principles are still deliverable Correct. within grant applications. So, you know, we still subscribe to the Greenway principles. Um, this particular purpose would be, I would argue, a broader approach to it. Park wardens, mm -hmm. which are consistent with Greenway principles by maintaining the parks. And then, you know, we could take this to the next level also. Okay, you're a park warden, you're doing a great job. Do you want to also maintain the trails within that park? Exactly. Right? Yep. That works. So what line are we gonna open up? Four. Put that in the existing 443 line, is that what you said? Uh, 442. 442. 442, okay. And you're just renaming so it. So just make it 12, what was okay. it? Uh, it'll be 1250 then? It's 12,500, that's right. Right. 12,500. Mm -hmm. Correct. So 71. Because it's 2,500 in and out. Okay. Frederick, you have that, right? Yeah, you just got to move the 10,000 from 103B to 442. Are we moving it or keeping it from 103? Excuse me? Are we? 
Uh, are we moving it from 103 or we are leaving 103 and adding 10,000? We're going we're to take it out of 130. Okay. 10,000, you're going to move it over to 442. 442. Okay. So you're going to go zero and 130. Final line doesn't change. You're just going to move from 130 to 442 to 10,000. And the title change. And the title change, Park yeah, Warden. Uh, park, Park Wardens. And yeah. I'm sure Jim would be very happy if you can call it something other than <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that. Incentive. <laughs> yeah. Jim okay. wants to volunteer. Con Look at him. It would be contractual uh, consideration. <laughs> That's why I made it a dot four. That's why it's a dot four. Right. It was a dot yeah. one. Right. Yeah. That's, see, I know okay. what I'm doing. Okay, back to you know the B funds. <laughs> Ready, be Frederick? Place. <laughs> yeah, That's the okay. Key. 7140-104-B, aerobics, 1,500. 7140-105-B, basketball, zero. 7140-106-B, volleyball, 4,000. 7310-100-B, rec director, 26,000. 7550-400-B, celebrations, 2,500. 7550-402-B, veterans events, 7,000. 7550-405-B, community events, 3,000. 7550-407-B, special event contingency, 500. 7550-400-B, volunteer recognition, zero. 8010-100-B, Zoning Board Secretary, 22612. 810-198-B, Contingency, 1000. 8015-101-B, Deputy Zoning Administration, 6677. 8020-100-B, Planning Board, Secretary 22612, 8020400B, Planner 10,000, and 8160420B, Castle Point 5500. That's the expenses from the B fund, and then we had you got that. You revenues. Oh, there's no change. No, there is change. All right, so Frederick, you got that? So you're done, right? So we do make we need to make some some minor changes on the B revenue, even though the bottom line doesn't oh, yeah. change. L line items changed. So 1560.00B safety uh, inspection fees, 30,000. 21100B zoning fees, 21,000. Hopefully that matches you. Yes. 21120000B zoning board of appeals, 12,000. 200150 b planning board fees, 56,000, and 2590.000B, building permits, 345,000. Um, there is one other line item, 2401.000B, interest and earnings is now 75,000. So the numbers we quoted before, before we went to the interest and earnings, all it was was a squizzle uh, that the department heads did. So again, it's the same dollar amount when you look at tentative budget versus recommended, but they wanted to get the actual to line to how the plan is set up. So that's what we did tonight on that. All right, so uh, before we uh, vote on the B fund amendments, uh, any other council members have comments? Uh, if not, just a couple things here uh, that we codified within this proposal. Uh, as Councilman Phillips mentioned, uh, town patrol, which is identified here as vandalism. The town patrol budget of 250,000, uh, we broke out into um, a couple different initiatives. Uh, as we've spoken about previously, the school resource officer partnership with the school district, uh, we put $50,000 into that partnership. Uh, the school district is providing funding uh, as well. Uh, as of right now, it's 40,000 that they uh, chip in, but post January 1st, we have to have that conversation again. Uh, the idea is uh, we have full-time school resource officers in Wapachers Junior High School now and Ketchum High School. We have part-time SROs, I should say, um, per diem uh, non-permanent SROs in Evans Elementary School and Myers Corners Elementary School. 
the object of the game here is to get consistency within those elementary schools and have the same police officers there. They just have to, from a staffing standpoint, have to have to make that happen, which can be somewhat of a challenge. Uh, but our commitment is clear here within the budget to, to support that program. We're also continuing to support the uh, vehicle and traffic, uh, targeted traffic enforcement, which we started a few years back. Uh, that's really a neighborhood quality of life detail. Uh, we often get calls from residents uh, with respect to um, individuals speeding through neighborhoods. And this gives us the ability to have a separate detail that we can actually see um, you know, how often it's staffed and where it's positioned. Um, uh, that's funded uh, here in the budget separately for $22,000. And uh, in addition to that, uh, the town board is also uh, proposing uh, funding for purchasing uh, additional speed um, uh, speed devices that uh, uh, reflect uh, a driver's speed. Uh, these can be fixed or these can be portable. We have to discuss it further. I, I mentioned it to Mike Sheehan. I think there's money in this year's budget to start this program. Yeah, so we budgeted for four here. So they're about okay. $5,000 a pop. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure there's money in the 2023 for that too. So you may have noticed them in the village of Wappagers. Uh, still a little bit of challenge with the technology. Um, I happen to notice that when it gets really cold, sometimes they, you know, they freeze up and they just have a bunch of dots on them. So, still new technology, but they're solar powered, and um, you know, they're not for enforcement, but they're really as a reminder. Hey, listen, slow down, slow down, right? So that's in here. Also, want to mention that the town board again has committed to funding for the town guide being printed, which we think that is a, a valuable, uh, tangible. Um, uh, guidebook that we can make available to residents. Yes, it can be available in PDF form. Yes, we can put it on the website, but there's something about having it in your hand sometimes where you can see what services are available. So that uh, is also a commitment within uh, within this this fund. So if there's no further questions or comments, uh, we have a motion from Councilman Phillips. We need a second. I'll second. second. I'll give this one to Angela, uh, Councilwoman Bettina on the second uh, for the B fund. Uh, if there's no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 That's B fund. I got it. You got it. Do it. So the last fund we're going to do is the DB uh, fund. There's only expense changes, no revenue changes. So the first one is line 1994-01 DB, contingency payroll, zero. Next one is 5110.100 DB, highway salaries. It's 1277859 that's consistent with what we're providing everybody as far as uh, salary increases. Uh, 5110.405 DB, blacktop, uh, it's 59,800. Line 5130.401 DB, it's machine equipment, zero. 5140.100 DB, brush and weeds, it's uh, 10,000. We've only spent about $6,000 this year so far, so we're well within the, the 10,000. Uh, line 5140.400 DB, another line for brush and weeds. It's 15,000. We've spent about 9,000 so far year to date. Last two items, uh, 5142.100 DB, snow removal. It's 100,000. And then 5142.400 DB, it's salt. Um, it's 500,000. So we should be good for the winter. We spent about 270,000, although we did have a late uh, winter. Uh, but 500,000 plus the salt bays are filled completely, so we should be in good shape for that. And that's it. So uh, we're very cognizant of the salt cost. It obviously has increased significantly over, you know, especially the last five years. Uh, but the good news is at this moment the salt shed is full. Uh, for the record, 16% of the salt shed is the village of Wappingers Falls. Uh, my understanding is they have not ordered yet. However, we are full. so. What we've done in the past, and this is up to the highway superintendent, when we're full, if they don't have room for another order, we can actually provide them with their needs, uh, at least for the beginning of the season, and then charge back the village. So it'll, it'll work out. It's basically a shared service. Um, but we, nevertheless, we did still um, budget uh, 500000 there. So hopefully we don't need to use it all, but we're, we're safe. Uh, yeah. That is for public safety. Uh, we'll entertain a motion on the DB amendments. Move it. 
Okay. Yeah. Councilwoman Bettina got in on that one, seconded by Aye. Councilman Aye. Phillips, Phillips for the Aye. DB. If there's Aye. no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's done. Let me just say this. Frederick, uh, previously we had a, um, a line for disaster plan. Remember we, we created that a few years back and then COVID happened. Um, do you remember where that was in the budget? Yeah, it's in, it's in the A fund. Um, it's A fund? Yes, uh, 1680. We used to call it disaster preparedness. What is it called? Disaster preparedness. Oh, yeah. Okay. What, what is the line number? 16 what? 1680. Uh, let me just uh, take a look here. Because I didn't see it here, but. What do you, how much is in there today, Frederick, for it? It's line uh, 3640.400. 364, oh, yeah, 364. Uh, a fund. So we have 6,000 there. There's 6,000 in there. Hold on, I'm saying 30. 364. 1680. Hmm? 1680. Okay. Thanks. And how much did you say was in the, the other? Oh, so we have $6,000 in there. Okay. Is that in the tentative if budget also? Yes. All right, so that, that's, a, that's a walk. Here's where I'm going with this. So I'm not looking at making a change here. I just want to make sure that it's in there. Uh, my intent, and I hope my colleagues will agree, is uh, we have uh, funding uh, through ARPA, the ARPA COVID money, which we can use for certain things. And I want to take a small piece of that uh, to commit towards uh, the revision of the townwide disaster plan uh, in 2024 and using um, a uh, consultant to assist with that I think is key I mean we just in a period of three weeks we had uh, within the village of Wappagers we had uh, three disasters basically and we had to shelter individuals uh, here uh, in one of the pre-designated shelters uh, uh, which happens to be uh, at the junior high so I want to make sure we have uh, those types of uh, situations articulated properly uh, ahead of time. Uh, everything was handled fine, but you know we're not going to be here forever. We want to have this framework in place uh, so that uh, uh, we have a real revised plan. The last plan that was fully revised was uh, under the Ruggiero administration uh, in 2005, I believe. So we've done some changes to it over the years, but most recently we did the COVID uh, pandemic uh, continuity of operations plan, which was required by the state. I like to bring it all together into one document and uh, keep that line item in the budget. We can at least have some seed money there and then reimburse it with ARPA money because I believe it's an eligible expense, Jim, for emergency yeah, planning. Yeah, I believe it is. Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure I mention that. So at this point, we have the amendments um, uh, approved uh, for each fund. And uh, Frederick, where do we stand now with respect to uh, our budget numbers? So we, with all these changes, um, we are looking at uh, 66 cents per thousand assessed value on the village rate. And then on the townward rate, we are looking at uh, $1.71 cents. So that, that 66 thousand. compares to 74 cents the prior year, and the 171 compares to $1.83? Yes, prior year was $1.83 in the townwide, and the village rate village rate was 74 cents and tax so, go ahead i'm sorry go ahead. tax levy wise uh, overall tax levy on which the tax cap is based uh, uh, tax cap law that cannot exceed two percent we are looking at an increase of 169,462 dollars which is 1.94 percent of the previous overall tax levy meaning that uh, this budget is under the tax cap of 2%. Okay. All right, so as we stand right now, uh, what about the uh, infamous chargeback uh, formula? Yes, yeah, so um, just did that today, what the, right? For the folks uh, that are <laughs> watching, so you know, I couldn't figure out what this variable was for years when we were doing budgets, and then we finally figured out that Dutchess County uh, Department of Finance charges each municipality a, uh, a fee, administrative fee, 
uh, to do all this. And there have been years in the past where we'd say, okay, the tax rate is going to be this, and then we'd see it come out as two cents more. So where do we stand now? So every year the, uh, the county uh, sends us a, a, a letter indicating that, um, uh, letting us know the amount of chargeback expenses that uh, we incurred. And they, 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 they tell us that uh, either we don't pay it or if we pay it by a certain date, so the date we were supposed to pay the amount for next for 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 next year, which was which is twenty nine thousand seven seven seventy one, was supposed to be on the thirteenth, which was today. So I did call them and, and let them know that if they give us up to Friday, we'd be able to send them the check. So they said, okay, no problem. So they will not increase this rate that I, right. I just so we, mentioned. Frederick and I had a conversation with the county this morning. Yeah. They agreed that if you got it by Friday, as he said, the 29771 it wouldn't increase like it has in the past, the two cents, whatever. So what he's talking about here, the 66 cents and $1. seventy-one won't change. All right, so we're paying the charge back ahead of time? Is that yep. how? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. all right. Are they, are they still, is there still a charge back for election machines? Or Not they, anymore. They eliminated no, they eliminated that. that. Yes. Yeah. Now this is the chargeback that is for administrative work. Yeah, for uh, processing uh, tax bills the tax and rates and all that. Right. And again, we for years we were trying to figure out how there was a discrepancy. Now, my understanding is we we budget for the chargeback ahead of time. We pay it, and that way right. uh, it's taken care of. Otherwise, it was on the back end. Right. So, so what you're saying is the final tax rates uh, upon approval this evening will be. 171, $1.71 per thousand uh, for town outside village. Previously it was $1.83 per thousand. And within the village of Wabinger's Falls, town of Wabinger, it's 66 cents per thousand. Previously, 74 cents per thousand. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, so that's. Uh, and if, if I, I may just add sure. something on the um, chargeback, this is what the chargeback is all about. It says the chargeback is our charges to your town for services related to the production of the assessment rolls and bills, maintenance of escrow accounts and refunds related to erroneous taxes and judgments. So that is what the chargeback represent. Okay. And if uh, they, are, they will be added onto our town unless we pay Dutchess County Commission of Finance by November 13th. Yeah. So pay it uh, this week so they won't add that, that charge yeah, to no, they, they gave okay. us a break today. Good. That's, Thank you. That's the right way to do it. Okay. So you heard the numbers. Uh, that's where we're at um, uh, with respect to the 2024 uh, proposed fiscal uh, year budget. Uh, at this point, uh, if there's no further discussion on the final budget, uh, we'll entertain a motion to adopt 2023-149, which is adopting the annual budget for fiscal year 2024. I'll move it. Second. Motion made by Councilman Cassell, seconded by Councilman Phillips. <coughs> Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Oh. Aye. Aye. It is approved. Okay. At this point, uh, do the board members have any uh, items for special consideration? No. 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 Okay. All right. Uh, we were approached by uh, some members of an organization that want to speak to the town board. I think it would be more appropriate if we put you on the agenda for the December 13th meeting, uh, give you an opportunity to address the board if that's okay with you? Okay. Uh, appreciate your patience this evening. As you can tell, it was not a normal town board meeting. It was the final budget meeting. So uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, we were uh, focused on that and we'll be happy to hear from you on December 13th. Um, and we'll provide that information to the town clerk. Yep. I already did with Joe. Okay. So. And uh, are there any items for special or for executive order? I, I'd, I'd like to talk to the board um, in executive session regarding contract negotiations on two subjects. Okay. Okay. Um, Should be brief. All right. So uh, and for it's contract. not about stipends. 
Okay, for contract uh, discussion within executive session, we'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to go into executive session. Second. Motion by Councilman Cassell, second by Councilman Bettina. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 And let me just say this before we uh, leave this room. Um, our controller, Frederick, uh, you have uh, faithfully served this town for how many years? 15 years. And uh, Frederick will be uh, exiting uh, at the end of this month to start a new chapter in health care. And uh, talk about one, uh, you know, from one extreme to the other. Um, but we congratulate you on uh, your success in health care. And uh, we, we want to personally uh, thank you for uh, your diligence uh, through often challenging fiscal times, uh, challenging political times. Uh, you have been steadfast in ensuring that uh, the town board uh, has been navigated in the right direction. So I just want to say thank you and give the colleagues up here an opportunity to uh, express their appreciation as well. Frederick, it's always been a pleasure to work with you. It, it really has. Um, so thank you for all your help. I know my brother thought very highly of you when he was town board member also and enjoyed working with you also. So my best wishes to you. Um, you'll do fine. You'll do great. But we will miss you. So thank you again. Frederick, thank you for your service. And thank you for putting up with us. Yeah. And um, <laughs> we, we wish you all the best. Thank you. So Frederick, I want to thank you as well. I know you and I have spent a lot of quality time lately together, probably more than you like. But uh, again, thank you for going through the budgets over the last couple of years. Uh, we do have the same kind of background, financial background, so we can kind of talk the same language here a little bit. So thank you for your patience. I thank you for your support. Thank you for spending the time with me to go through a number of, like we have been over the last couple of weeks here with the budget. So I really do appreciate your help, and I wish you the best of luck in your new endeavor. Thank you. Thank you. Former Supervisor Gusser. Thank you. Uh, hopefully I don't need to use the microphone. I just want to say that uh, when I came into office uh, back in 2011, we had some difficult financial times. We would not have made it through without Frederick. And everything I know about budgeting, about municipal funds, I learned from him. And he even taught me how to balance my own check. <laughs> so you are you are a great asset, and wherever you go, you will be an asset. And I want to thank you for what you taught me and for the service you gave to the town. So thank you, Frederick. Thank you, Frederick. Thank you, Frederick. Thank you, Frederick. We're going to move to executive session. Thank you.